Hi, this is part of a series of YouTubes on the Advanced DCDL Access 2007. It will be well worth looking at the one about creating lookup tables before you view this one. I've got a table here called Pets that's got some lookups in it already. I'm going to have a look in the design view. If I have a look at the gender field and click on the lookup tab, you can see here that there's a lookup already uh, that was a value list that we typed in and that allows people to enter an M for male or F for female and I'd like to be able to add to that list so I'm going to do a semicolon here do double quotes U and double quotes so now there's three different options that the user can enter in however they could if they wanted to put an E in or another letter entirely and I don't want them to be able to do that I want them to select just one of those three items so I'm going to change this item here limit to list and change that to a yes. Now if I view this to test it out, I'm going to go into the view table. Okay, see if I try and enter a new one here. I can enter a U fine. However, if I try and enter something else like a, a W and tab over to the next one, it just won't let me do it. So I'm going to press escape to come out of that. I don't much want to save it. Let's have a look at another item here that we need to know about. Okay, something else that would be really useful to be able to change and that is to make a field obligatory. So I don't want the user to be able to leave the, the breed, um, breed field blank. We really do need to know if it's going to be a dog or a ferret that we're looking after. So if I change this here and if I look down here I need to go back onto the general tab. See here we've got an option required. I'm going to change that to yes and that means that that breed field now cannot be left blank. Something else I'd like to do, if I have a look at this table design here, that just shows that um, if there's a record that has got the gender, or oh, sorry, the breed down as blank, it's going to complain about it, but I'll not worry about that. See how I've used mixed cases here on the contact name and I'd like them to all appear in uppercase I think it would look an awful lot neater so I'm going to go back into the design of the table and on the contact name here I'm going to change the format I need to click here and if I use the greater than sign it means they're all going to appear in uppercase as I'll show you now so it doesn't change the way that they've been stored at all it's just changing the way that they're displayed and if I did a less than sign, it makes them all display in lowercase, like that. Just one more thing that we need to have a look at, and that's the input mask. On some things, especially on telephone numbers, it's useful to be able to force the user uh, to put the telephone number in, in a particular format. Now there's four different letters that are really useful to remember. A 9 is an optional number, so if I did four nines, a space, and another six nines, it would make the user enter in four digits and a space and then six digits. However, it, they wouldn't be compulsory, so if they only entered five numbers instead of six, then it would still allow them to do it. However, if there's zeros, it makes them compulsory numbers. So I'll show you here, go back into the design. So here if I enter a telephone number, remember those first four, four numbers were zeros. So if I try and enter one, two, three, and a space, it won't let me. It's just not letting me do that. I have to enter four numbers in, but the rest of the numbers were nines, which means that they are optional, so it doesn't matter if I leave some of those blank, that's fine. So it's forcing the user to put an area code in here, but the rest of the numbers it doesn't matter at all what you put in. Let's have a look at something else that we can do instead. Okay. Now, similarly, for the letters, if we want to make a letter 
optional, so I can use a small a, lowercase a, and a space, and now an uppercase makes it compulsory. So we can do all sorts of different things. The letters are obviously more useful for something like postcodes, perhaps, but they're worth having a good play around with. One more thing to know is that you can put characters in there in quotation marks. So let's make this a bit more realistic now. I'd like to have start off with a bracket, and that's going to appear on our input mask, and then I'm going to have compulsory area code one, two, three, four. I'm going to have a close brackets appear and a space after it. And then some telephone numbers are five characters, so I definitely want five zeros. And then it's optional if there's another two characters on it on the telephone number as well. Just in case it's a longer telephone number. I'm going to go into the view now. And let's see what happens. Okay, When I go into here, you see how the brackets have appeared in the space afterwards, because I put those in double quotation marks. I'll put telephone number in. Jumps over here. One, two, three, four, five. It'll allow me to do that. But I can also put six, seven, a couple more numbers in as well, if necessary. And that's input masks. So we've been through modifying lookup lists, adding items to it, restricting to a list, had a look at some basic formatting, uh, some masks and making field required. Thanks for watching.